hard to tell. I feel like these are two very sort of volatile, blow you up characters. But on the other hand, they're, they're kind of both glass cannons in a way. I, I, I agree. I also do feel like uh, Falco uh, can potentially decimate uh, 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 Ness uh, uh, off stage if he if he does manage to say like reflect his up B or or, or, or manage to get the dunk uh, 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 down there. Anything is possible. I feel like generally <coughs> Falco has a little bit better space control, and we've seen Steelix do that. You know quite a bit using, you know, the lasers and reflectors. Already trying to pull one out there, but instead gets a PK Thunder 2 for his troubles. Yeah, and if I'm not mistaken, it's, it's been a while since, since uh, PK Chris has been has been in Xeno, so uh, th good to see you. They, they still make it far in bracket. <clears throat> so I do like the idea of that laser there that Steelix did off stage to uh, get PK Chris to stop doing the PK Thunder, but it almost put him in a worse position, ironically enough, because it gave <laughs> PK Chris the chance to start uh, charging the yo-yo at ledge. Mm, yes. Oh, okay, I let's, do let's see. like the idea of trying to threaten Steelix at ledge, trying to find, trying to find a bit more space to come in. Now, and Steelix at ledge again, and this time the down smash does <coughs> connect. Now, now the one thing uh, Falco does have to be a little careful of, well, rather, uh, what Steelix has, has to be careful of is uh, is Ness's uh, disjointed uh, hitboxes both on the ground and, and on the air, because. Uh, he, they can probably trade well. They can trade well with, with both his arrows oh and his. Uh... Oh wow! Just barely uh, mistimed the yo-yo. I mean, Steelix gonna be getting right back to ledge. But as I was saying before, it's it feels like once one of these characters wins neutral and gets the other off stage, then the other one just gets blown up. And right now, it feels like PK Chris is doing a little bit more blowing up than Steelix is. I'm gonna see it right now. And Pika Chris actually doing a pretty good job of covering himself at ledge. We can see him using the uh, PK Flash, using a lot of these long lasting hitboxes to um, prevent Steelix from threatening at ledge. Ooh. Meanwhile, Steelix just unfortunately hasn't had these same luxuries. It feels like once Steelix has to commit to an option, then it's been curtains. But that time, use, uh, able to use the double jump uh, kind of empty movement to get in and get the <coughs> down tilt kill. Yes, but uh, still uh, does still have, have a bit of a, a hill to climb because uh, he is still, on, he is like on his last knock versus uh, PK Chris's two. Oh, well, what never mind. bait by PK Chris right there. Well, he well he he is still living. He still has another chance. So let, let's see if he, he can make it work. Yeah, all right, Steelix does get his neutral in, but I mean, yeah, and right there, it, it just feels like Steelix just hasn't been able to get the conversions that one would expect out of, you know, the Falco player in this type of matchup. And there, the back throw is going to be taking it for PK Chris. Now, uh, I, hmm, I think... It, it feels like what Steelix needs in this matchup is to really secure those conversions. Because, I mean, at the end of the day, your Falco, <coughs> your disadvantage is not going to be that great, especially when you're off stage against Ness. So really start to think about what it is that you can change, what it is that you can adapt to. And what that is, is playing to your character's strengths, which is, you know, Falco gets to blow you up when he hits you with one up tilt. And I and, and I and I agree with this. Uh, pick, picking the good music on, on, on a different stage is, is, is a start of, uh, of, of a stronger mindset. Three, two, one, oh, boss go. battle. It sounds like a, I don't know, some kind of idol song. Yo, but, yo, but it goes in, though. It, it does pop. All right, and there we go. We can already start to see it. Steelix starting to starting to really press that advantage, and a lot of that is going to come in, you know, working around the way that PK Chris has been um, 
has been covering himself <coughs> at ledge like this. Um, Steelix has to work a lot more at uh, covering that space. And there we go, using the reflector. Oh. Desi, what's up? He met. He managed to, call it, uh, to, to to go for a trade, which actually worked out for him. Uh, good, good on Steelix. Okay, for getting oh, that. Oh, that's unfortunate. Well, oh, but we tech. tech those. Oh, but you get back thrown. We, unfortunately, we don't we don't tech in the air though. <laughs> so so unfortunate for Steelix. I believe he wanted to side B to ledge there, but just missed it. Put him in an awful situation where he did get the tech, but you know it was a band aid on oh. a gunshot. Oh, but uh. But he managed to put the well, BK Chris uh, uh, managed to, to, to attack the uh, the illusion, which which actually which actually punished him uh, a little a little harder uh, uh, than I thought. <laughs> and there we go. Starting to get some frame traps, but not able to get anything out of that uh, drag down forward air. Unfortunately for Steelix, but finally we're starting to see a bit of a lead coming out. He does have the uh, percent lead once again, not getting a anything out of that drag down. PK Chris has just been ready for it each time. And oh. a jab lock, you're dead. And you're out of here. God damn. So once, so once again, Steelix ha has to climb up across that ladder. But if you could, but if you could get a kill while still have, having a fresh stock, then maybe a chance for him to, to, uh, to, to, to take this game too. Yep. So Ooh. we'll see right now. Steelix trying to use that reflector, get himself some space so he can get in. Trying to anti air with the, uh, the up smash, but not finding it. These landing forward airs are just doing Steelix no favors right now. It, even when he's been hitting them, he just has not found any conversions out of them. Meanwhile, PK Chris getting all the conversions. Not able to find the stock, though, right there. Up air not going to be doing it quite yet, but now we have another edge guard situation. See if oh. Steelix is able to find it, but he tries to tech the PK Thunder, too. And unfortunately, he just air dodged to death. You, you know what? I think that's like... That's like the lesser of two scenarios that, that, that could have happened. It could have ended a lot worse. Like, um, like imagine a uh, uh, getting hit by by a raw uh, uh, up uh, up beat of Ness's hit, and and then you have to potentially deal with an untechable situation. I, I <laughs> it was just I, it it felt like seeing a bit of frustration coming out in Steelix, where it's like. You've been struggling to kill this whole time, and right now it's like, I need to go out right now. I need to get this kill, and it put him in a just an unwinnable situation. There Honestly, I feel like even if he did get hit by the PK Thunder 2, eh, probably not takeable at that percent. Yeah, there there was an absolute a lot of struggle on, on Steelix's side as, as far as, as you say, the, the conversions, getting, getting the kill, getting the edge guard. It seems like... Every situation that, that seemed to be uh, a potential for him to get sun ended up him not benefiting much of, of anything. Even even as you said, the uh, the, 